Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for our national anthem. I would now like to request Sri Nitin Desai, Chairman, the Energy and Resources Institute, to deliver the welcome address. Good evening, everyone. Let me begin first, but that it is my honor and pleasure to welcome to this inaugural uh, function uh, the Sri Jagdeep Dhankar, the Honorable Vice President of India. Uh, Mr. Mark Phillips, His Excellency Mark Phillips, the Prime Minister of Guyana, Sri Bhupendra Yadavji, the Honorable Minister for Environment, Forests and Climate Change, and my colleagues, Dr. Vibha Dhawan, the Director General of uh, Terry, who has been leading it very effectively for so many years, and our colleague, Sri Ella Kedia, who has uh, been the one organizing it, and there are many other people of great standing and eminence who are here. I welcome you. We are meeting here on the year which is a 50th anniversary year of Terry, an organization which has been developing year by year steadily, focusing on not just environment, but environment and linking it with uh, development. And it's, a, I, I, it's an organization with a great deal of uh, capacity. And in many ways, the reason it has opted for a World Sustainable Development Summit is if you're trying to link environment and development, you have to accept that environments do not, ecosystems do not respect national boundaries. That it's necessary if you want to link environment and development to also have a system of cooperation between countries. Now we see this very much in climate change, an, eco an ecosystem which is global in character, but there are other areas on shared water or shared rivers, for instance. And this is why Terry decided to set up this system of World's Sustainable Development Summit. And what this summit seeks to do is to bring together people who are involved in decision making on environment and on development. People in government, people in the corporate sector, people in think tanks, and others in community systems which are involved in actions and decisions 
which will shape the link between environment and development. We have seen this emerging much more strongly now in areas like climate change and so on. And we hope that with the bringing together of people who take the decisions which influence sustainability of development, or the link between environment and development, we will be able to advance things. But today we are moving beyond the stage of raising awareness to asking ourselves what are the actions required, not just raising awareness, but what are the actions required to address these problems. That is a function of our event. And I look forward greatly to what we will learn from these three days and I look forward particularly to what we shall hear from the three very eminent people that we have here today. So let me just end by saying, t welcoming all of you once again to this meeting. And like you, I look forward to what we have to hear from our very eminent people who are sitting with us on the days. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. May I now call upon the Honorable Minister for Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Sri Bhupendra Yadav, to grace us with his words. Honorable Vice President of India, Shri Jagdeep Dhankar Ji, Honorable Prime Minister of Guyana, His Excellency <laughs> Brigadier Mark Phillips, Mr. Nitin Desai, Dr. Vibha Dhawan, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen. It is a delight and an honor to extend my warmest welcome to the esteemed gathering for the 23rd World Sustainable Development Summit hosted by the Energy and Resource Institute, Terry. Being a part of yet another World Sustainable Development Summit and my long association with Terry brings me great joy. The deliberation that take place at this summit continue to be essential in determining the paths of our sustainable future. We must come together in our shared commitment to promote sustainability and equity in society plagued by catastrophic concern of global warming and threats of global peace. The World Sustainable Development Summit offer a vital forum for deliberating on the issues, solutions and initiative for preservation of our environment. I congratulate TD on the completing 50 years of the institution building. The theme of the summit, Leadership for Sustainable Development and Climate Justice, is especially needed to tackle climate crisis. It is essential to encourage young people to be catalysts for change and inspire current and future leaders to support leadership to achieve the sustainable development goals and the Paris Climate Agreement. Ladies and gentlemen, we believe in both fighting climate change and ensuring climate justice. As a nation that upholds climate justice, everyone in India must have access to means necessary to live with dignity. We believe access to energy is a right for all citizens and therefore energy must be affordable. At the same time, energy must be clean. India is shifting toward renewable resources at a fast pace. Between 2017 and 2023, India has added around 100 gigawatt of installed electric capacity, of which around 80% is from non-fossil fuel-based resources. Further, India is one of the na nations that has revised its NDCs upward indicating deep commitment to enhance climate action and further submit our long-term low emission development strategy at COP27 in Egypt. I take pride in sharing this fact with this August gathering that we have met two of our 2015 climate goals. First, 
reduction in emission intensity of GDP by 33 percent between 2005 and 20, 2019, which is achieved 11 years ahead of schedule. Second, <laughs> India has achieved 44 percent of electric installed capacity through non-fossil fuel sources nine years prior to the target for 2030. Friends, we need to work together to protect our planet from the triple planetary challenges of pollution, climate change, and biodiversity loss. There is a dire need to address unsustainable consumption and production. It is imperative that industrial development be directed towards sustainable production and serve as catalysts for more sustainable consumption. Honorable Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi ji has outlined a one word mantra, life, lifestyle for environment, which is at the core of India's goal for, safe, for a safe planet. As we all know, in 2021 at COP26, Honorable Prime Minister Modi ji introduced Mission Life and under the India Presidency of G20, the call for sustainable lifestyles found its place in important deliberations. We saw a historic eruption of the Green Development Pact by the G20 nations as part of the New Delhi Declaration. The government's recent financial policy statement has once again strengthened India's vision for green growth across multiple sectors with the underlying thought being that all future growth in the country must essentially be green. Ladies and gentlemen, in December 2023, I attended 28th Conference of Parties COP in Dubai, UAE. The major outcome from COP28 include a decision and outcome of the first global stock take up global climate ambition before the end of the decade. These global efforts will be taken up by countries in a nationally determined manner, taking into account the Paris Agreement and their different national circumstances. Another major outcome of COP28 is the agreement on the operationalization of the loss and damage fund and its funding arrangements. The initiative of Green Program was notified by the Government of India in, on October 2023, its goal is to encourage behavioral change to inculcate a more sustainable and responsible way of living by providing incentive for businesses, communities and individuals to take, undertake green measures. Apart from this, under the leadership of Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi ji, mission life need to be internationalized and intensifies in our lives. In keeping with the goal of Mission Life led by Prime Minister Shri Modi ji, India introduced the Green Credit Fund which I have referred earlier also. Apart from that, with other, other essential programs, India has taken a lead. So many other Green and other Climate Action Program like CDRI, International Solar Alliance, Big Cat Alliance, and the Global Biofuel Alliance also. In the leadership of Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji, India is working towards green and clean planet. Member of August gathering, there has been a significant shift in the global industrial landscape as industry transition has combined higher on the international agenda since the launch of Leadership for Industri Industry Transformation in 2019. However, the real transition challenges of technology transfer and finance are yet to be addressed. The challenge can be addressed by collaborative international mechanism and ensure barriers such as intellectual property rights are addressed to facilitate technology transfer from developed to developing countries. Leadership for Industri Industry Transition 2.0 will focus on supporting low carbon transition on the ground through a structured framework and on the based on three pillars. First, global forum for dialogue. Second, technology transfer and co-development. And third, an industry transition platform. Through these pillars, the member will continue to support, engage and promote industry transition. Toward the end, 
I would like to re-emphasize the fact that no country can carry out the mission to create a planet safe for humanity on its own. Equity and climate justice must be our guiding principle as we embark on this journey together. We hope that global community will come together in the fight against the climate change. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for those insightful words. I would now request His Excellency Brigadier Mark Phillips, Prime Minister of Guyana, to share a few words with us. Thank you. Madam Chairperson, Her Excellency, Your Excellency Sri Jagdeep Dankar, Vice President of India, Honorable Sri Bupendo Yadav, Minister of Environment, Forests and Climate Change, Dr. Viva Dawan, Mr. Nitin Desai, and Ms. Shailay Kidai. Ladies and gentlemen, standing on all other protocols previously observed, good evening. It's a matter of pride for me to join the Honorable Vice President of India and other dignitaries present here as we inaugurate this edition of the World Sustainable Development Summit, encouraging climate inclusive policies at the global level and tackling the increasing threat to climate change has emerged as a priority for our leaders in the spirit of fostering climate action, the governments of India and Guyana have been focusing on building a resilient and sustainable future. I'm glad to mention that at the beginning of this year, our relationship was further strengthened as India approved the signing of a five-year memorandum of understanding to bolster cooperation in the hydrocarbon sector, covering areas such as sourcing of crude oil, cooperation in crude oil refining, and collaboration in the natural gas sector. My country's association with the Energy and Resources Institute goes back a long way. And our long-standing relationship has seen collaboration across sectors. So I take this opportunity, as you observe the 50th anniversary of Terry, to say congratulations to you on the first 50 years. And uh, we look forward to working with you as you pursue the next 50 years of Terry. Terry has been engaged in grassroots level work with Guyana as a research institute that is pioneering in enabling energy transitions and renewable energy technology use. Senior government representatives from Guyana have been a part of the previous editions of the World Sustainable Development Summit. As the world grapples with a climate crisis, the theme of this year's summit, Leadership for Sustainable Development and Climate Action, presents a timely opportunity for stakeholders gathered here today to deliberate and lay the foundation for sustainable and climate sensitive policies. Since the adoption of the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, there have been some advancements in SDG 7. The number of people across the globe without electricity has almost 
have. And from 1.1 billion in 2010 to 675 million in 2021. Moreover, the renewable energy share in energy consumption has increased from 16% in 2010 to 19.1% in 2020. Notably, renewable energy proliferation in developing countries significantly grew by almost 10% annually. While these achievements are certainly commendable, further action is required, particularly in the least developed countries. According to IEA's net zero by 2050 scenario, United States $30 billion will be required annually to achieve universal access to electricity by 2030. Otherwise, we will fall short of the target of ensuring universal access to affordable, reliable, and modern energy services. Despite the many challenges experienced globally, including lack of sustainable financing, supply chain challenges, fiscal deficits, high debt levels, inflationary pressures, and higher energy and material prices, national commitments must not waver. There is a narrow window to increase progress for universal energy access and lift over 600 million out of the worst levels of energy poverty. Energy access policies and programs must expand socioeconomic benefits to bridge the gap, especially for vulnerable groups and communities. The uptake of renewable energy in response to oil market volatility and the climate crises is anticipated to considerably improve with approximately 25% of global energy consumption coming from renewables by 2030. An enabling environment to, sustain, to substantially increase the share of renewable energy in the global energy mix will require targeted policy interventions, technology transfer, and adequate funding. Taking advantage of the synergy between energy access and the deployment of renewable energy for electricity, heating, and transportation needs presents an opportunity to rapidly accelerate the renewable energy share and stay on target of the 1.5 degrees Celsius threshold. For the power sector alone, renewable energy will have to make up at least three-fifths of electricity generation. As the year 2030 approaches, there is a need for international cooperation and collaboration from the public and private sectors to address the complexities and uncertainties in climate financing, technical capacities, policies, and regulatory frameworks to drive the energy transition. Fundamentally, championing sustainable energy transitions will require a transformation of our energy systems to decouple economic growth from more polluting energy sources like heavy fuel oil and diesel and climate resilient innovations. The dependence on fossil fuels, aging infrastructure, high energy costs, and climate change vulnerability in Caribbean countries are driving the need for sustainable energy transitions. The Caribbean community 
can tap into its indigenous sources such as solar, PV, wind, hydropower, geothermal, biomass, and ocean energy. And it is estimated to have a combined renewable energy potential of 10,750 megawatts. According to the IDB, opportunities in the Caribbean's sustainable energy market could yield 16 billion United States dollars in net economic benefits to CARICOM countries in the long term. To generate these benefits, CARICOM countries will need to invest an estimated 11 billion US dollars over the next 10 years. Given its geography and terrain, Guyana is susceptible to the adverse effects of climate change, including extreme weather conditions. The majority of Guyana's population resides in the coastal areas and faces a high risk of flooding. Building climate resilience and generating knowledge and adaptation within the communities remain a priority area and will act as the key to addressing the growing, the growing climate challenges. Guyana, one of the newest oil producing countries, also faces the unique paradox or opportunity to balance sustainable development, the needs of a developing country, and the demand for renewables worldwide. While the historical contribution of developing countries towards global emissions has been minuscule, securing climate finance for adaptation and access to technology transfer for decarbonization has proven to be a challenge. Nevertheless, Diana is mindful of its international commitments as recognized in the Paris Agreement and is committed to maintaining its net carbon sink status. Moreover, by introducing policies such as REP Plus under our low carbon development strategy, Guyana has been able to control the deforestation rate as almost 85% of our country remains covered by forests. Guyana is committed to building its infrastructural capacity and transitioning towards clean energy. We launched our updated low carbon development strategy 2030 in 2022, which also focuses on aligning our policies with global climate and biodiversity goals. Our LCDS reinstates our commitment towards an ambitious energy transition program, which has found support from both India and Terry. Diana aims to incorporate a mix of clean and renewable energy, solar, hydro, wind, and natural gas energy resources to meet the country's energy needs over the next five years. It is envisioned that this plan will help add more than 500 megawatts of electricity capacity for residential and commercial uses, contributing to a 50% reduction in electricity costs. The Guyana's transformative energy initiatives include installation of a 300 megawatts natural gas to energy power plant, providing an important transition as the country develops its hydropower potential, commencing with the 165 megawatt Amelia Falls hydropower project that aims to generate cheaper and cleaner energy for all Guyanese and support the massive expansion of renewable energy in the national grid. The country's electric, electric utility will also be adding 33 megawatts of utility-scale solar power to decarbonize the 
power sector further. Moreover, the distribution of 30,000 solar PV systems to off-grid hinterland and riverine households is nearly completed and will benefit close to 140,000 persons in over 240 communities at the end of this project. This initiative was made possible through a line of credit from the government of India, and for this, the people of Guyana are truly grateful. There are additional investments to advance access to renewable energy in the hinterland communities, with Guyana currently implementing a number of small hydropower projects. Furthermore, the government has increased its investment in solar PV technology, including two utility-scale solar PV farms, Tortowan solar mini-grids, and rooftop solar PV systems at over 350 public buildings. We are focusing on significant infrastructure investments, developing our energy sector, bolstering healthcare services, and diversifying our agriculture sector. Guyana also recognizes the vulnerability of children to extreme weather events and their impact on children's health and access to safe water, nutrition, and infrastructure. To ensure that our children and youth inherit a sustainable future, we recently signed UNICEF's Declaration of Children, Youth, and Climate Action. As the theme of the summit also suggests, leadership at the global, national, and subnational levels will be crucial in taking timely and decisive steps towards meeting sustainable development goals. As we move closer towards the 2030 UN Sustainable Development Goals target, the first global stock take presents a concerning picture as we witness countries sliding back on some major sustainable development goals. As representatives from across the world, political and business leaders, heads of intergovernmental organizations, and youth converge at WSDS, let us vow to deliberate upon and forge partnerships that are critical to achieving the Paris Agreement goals, and more importantly, needed to keep the planet and its people healthy. I'm happy that we have been able to continue these discussions at the highest level and wish for continued and successful dialogue along the lines of a sustainable future for all for the remainder of 2024 World Sustainable Development Summit. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. Ladies and gentlemen, I now announce the launch of Terry Solutions for Sustainable Development. It is now my privilege to call to the podium the Honorable Vice President of India, 
Shri Jagdeep Dhankar to do us the honor of delivering the inaugural address. Honorable Prime Minister Guyana, His Excellency Brigadier Mark Phillips, Honorable Minister for Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Government of India, Sri Bhupinder Yadav, Chairman, the Energy and Resources Institute, Terry, Sri Nitin Desai, Director General, Terry. Dr. Vibha Dhawan, Curator, World Sustainable Development Summit, Dr. Shelley Kedia, Sri Sunil Gupta, Secretary, Vice President, Distinguished Audience, my Namaskar and warmest greetings to all. Greatly enthused to be with you all today at the 23rd edition of the World Sustainable Development Summit organized by Terry. I extend my gratitude to Terry for hosting this critical gathering, bringing together global leaders, experts, and stakeholders committed to the pursuit of sustainable development Contemporaneous, contemporaneous global need. For the past five decades, Terry has contributed by providing transformational solutions through policy, research, technological innovation, and advocacy. Atharva Ved ka Prithvi Sukta kehta hai, Prithvi hamari mata hai, with that kind of thinking and emotion, one cannot think of exploitation of Mother Nature. Our world is facing unprecedented challenges that demand collaborative and innovative solutions. Climate change, biodiversity loss, and the depletion of natural resources are threatening the very foundations of our existence. The urgency of these challenges requires bold and decisive action, and forums like this provide a valuable, vital platform for collective dialogue and commitment. In a world inter interconnected like never before, we must recognize that the challenges we face know no borders. The impact of our actions reverberates across nations affecting the most vulnerable communities and ecosystems. There can be no alternative to the formulation and adoption of people and nature-centric approaches. Global leadership must drive the mainstreaming of environmental protection and climate justice at all levels, embedding these principles in the very fabric of our societies. It is heartening to see India's leadership at the forefront of this global effort. The Indian government has demonstrated a steadfast commitment to sustainable development and environmental stewardship. From ambitious renewable energy targets to pioneering initiatives that balance economic growth and ecological preservation, India serves as a beacon of inspiration for nations around the world. One of the cornerstones of sustainable development is the transition to clean and renewable energy sources. Our commitment to renewable energy not only mitigates the impacts of climate change, but also opens avenues for economic growth, job creation, and technological innovation. India's commitment is evident 
not only in words, but in actions with the implementation of policies that reflect a dedication to the principles we advocate. Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi, along with the leaders of Singapore, Bangladesh, Italy, the USA, Brazil, Argentina, Mauritius, and the UAE launched the Global Biofuel Alliance on September 9, 2023, during G20 summit in New Delhi. This marks a significant step towards a more sustainable energy future. With India targeting to become carbon neutral by 2070 and expanding use of biofuel in its transport sector, this is a right initiative in the same direction. Electrical vehicles are receiving a boost like never before. Circular economy is being increasingly stressed on in the true spirit of sustainability. The integration of sustainability in our national planning, the allocation of budgets for green initiatives and the launch of flagship schemes that prioritize environmental protection showcase India's leadership in embracing a holistic and inclusive approach to development. We find ourselves at a unique ju juncture. Our Amrit Kaal is revealing itself to be the Goro Kaal for all Indians. As we take pride in our epochal achievements, it is essential to reflect upon the remarkable transformation that Bharat has undergone in just a decade. From being labeled as one of the fragile five economies, we have emerged as the fifth largest global economy, with projections indicating that India is poised to become the third largest economy by 2030. This meteoric rise is a testament to the indomitable spirit of Indian people, the visionary leadership, and the collaborative efforts that have propelled us forward. The exponential growth we have experienced brings with it challenges, particularly in the realm of sustainability and environmental conservation. Our economic progress must be harmonized with a commitment to sustainable development, ensuring that we leave a legacy that our future generations can inherit with pride. Today, as we take rightful pride in our achievements, we must also acknowledge the looming threat of climate change and the draconian consequences for the global community at large it has. India, with its rich tradition of sustainable practices, can be a guiding light for the world in adopting eco-friendly and inclusive development models. Our cultural ethos of living in harmony with nature provides a foundation upon which we can build a sustainable future for all. <clears throat> True to this spirit, our focus has not only been on mainstreaming sustainability into governance at home, but also in steering the global commitments. Last year, the International Big Cat Alliance, IBCA, was launched by the Prime Minister for conserving global big cats, including tiger. Earlier, India had spearheaded the launch of the International Solar Alliance. A green credit initiative was launched by the Prime Minister on the sidelines of 28th session of the UN Climate Change Conference in Dubai last year to encourage voluntary environmental positive actions. India is home to 75 of the world's wetlands of international importance with the second largest network of Ramsar sites in Asia. India's G20 presidency has given out a strong signal with its motto, Vasudev Kutamkam, which translates to considering the world in the spirit of one earth, one family, one future. The New Delhi Declaration adopted 
at the G20 summit impactfully recognized the importance of collective action in tackling environmental challenges and climate change. India's G20 presidency even furthered cross-cutting themes of life, lifestyle for environment, which is visualized to be a lifestyle and behavior stimulating masses and mass movement. Life envisions mobilizing change at the individual level that holds the potential to trigger shifts at a wider scale with positive spillover effects. Our international friends would also agree that climate change has disproportionate impact on those who are most vulnerable and hence climate justice needs to be the North Star. Leadership at all levels and spheres of society is a key factor for enabling that we work in a collective spirit towards integrating sustainable development and climate justice. The optimum utilization of natural resources should be a norm ingrained not only at a wider policy level but also within the conscience and consciousness of every individual. One's fiscal power should not determine the uses of such resources as water, petroleum, electricity. We must remember the words of Father of the Nation, Mahatma Gandhi Ji. I quote, the earth has enough for everyone's need, but not for everyone's greed, unquote. The challenges we face are daunting, but they are not insurmountable. By joining forces, embracing innovation, and fostering international cooperation, we can pave the way for a sustainable and secure future for all. Let this summit be a catalyst for action, inspiring us to redouble our efforts and work towards a world where the principles of sustainable development guide our every decision. I congratulate Terry on yet another edition of this summit, which continues to remain an important global platform to debate, discuss, and pave the way for just, equitable, and path-breaking solutions to protect planet Mother Earth. We need to act in togetherness and in concert for Mother Earth, not in the near future, not tomorrow, but today, right now. Thank you, and may our collective commitment to sustainability light the path towards a better and more secure future for generations to come. Thank you. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Thank you. I would now like to request Dr. Vibha Dhawan, Director General Terry, to felicitate His Excellency Brigadier Mark Phillips, the Prime Minister of Guyana, the Honorable Vice President of India, Sri Jagdeep Dhankar, and the Minister of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Sri Bhupendra Yadav, with traditional Indian shawls. Let us all now stand at attention for the national anthem. Yeah. 
शुभ नामे जागे तब शुभ आशीष मांगे गाहे तब जय गाधा जन गण मंगल गायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विभाता Yeah.